Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today I'm gonna to cook some beef back ribs. I got my new Kamada Joe, if you'll, and I got my new Kamada Joe hat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some of these beef back ribs that we got with some of the uh, rib, uh, rib roast that we picked up just last week. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I kind of already have this cook going already. Uh, I kind of decided late in the day that I wanted to film this video, but because um, I was going to cook it on my brand new Kamado Joe Classic 2 that I uh, have an unboxing for in the uh, link above, in the iCard above. But I'm also cooking some of these uh, beef back ribs that we got um, with the uh, prime ribs or rib roasts that we bought the other day that were on sale. I did a video iCard above showing you how to break those down into steaks, you know, to buy a couple because right now they're at $5.99, $5.88, something uh, like that, you know, per pound. And that's pretty great for uh, rib roasts. You cut them up into ribeye steaks. You can't find ribeye steaks uh, that cheap anywhere. So I bought a few of them, cut them up into steaks, kept a couple as roasts. But I like to cook these ribs different i like to cook them as ribs i don't like to cook them on the roast at all bones really to me don't add much flavor to the roast people will argue and disagree about that but to me i like to cook these ribs separate now these are not the same kind of ribs that you get on the short ribs or the plate ribs there's not a whole ton of meat on these these are what's backed up to the rib primal so it's really the meat that's in them is just what's between the bones, but there's a good amount in there. So I've got a few of those already in the sous vide and um, they've been cooking for just about 23 hours. So they'll be done in about an hour. since I'm waiting for the ribs to uh, get done in the sous vide and I'm waiting for the grill to heat up I thought I'd actually show you a little uh, quick little um, side dish I'm gonna do and actually I'm gonna use this duck fat spray that um, you've seen me use a few times from corn husker uh, kitchens love this stuff I actually got a couple cases of this stuff so I love it a lot I'm gonna use it on some potatoes and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I, my wife came home with some of these um, um, little early potatoes here. She's got a bag of them. And what I'm going to do, this is going to be a really simple, easy side dish. And I'm going to take these potatoes. I'm not going to peel them at all. I'm just going to cut them up into chunks. Uh, good bite-sized chunks. Probably similar to that. And um, I don't know. I've had this type of... Um, dish um, my mom actually used to make this kind of dish where it's really easy you just cut up some potatoes use a little bit of olive oil or any kind of fat really i'm going to happen to use the duck fat here just cut them up into chunks and then you take it this little bit of dried onion soup mix and then you just coat the potatoes in it and you cook them till they, they roast them till they're brown and they come out pretty darn good. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna chop up the rest of these potatoes. Then I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna mix in the duck fat in this um, onion soup mix. So, all right, I'll go away. I got all my potatoes chopped up. And like I said, these are really easy. You don't need to use the little potatoes. You can use regular sized potatoes. You can use Yukon Golds, Idaho, any kind you want. Um, just this works really well um, I don't know a lot I don't know a lot of you might have grown up with something like this but like I said this is something that's really easy have it about once a month because it's so easy what I'm gonna do is just spray the potatoes down with the duck fat like I said you don't need to use duck fat you can use any kind of oil you can use olive oil that's normally what I would use before I started using this duck fat but duck fat goes really good with potatoes so if you can get some of this I think they even sell it at Walmart now. Pick up a can and try it out. Just kind of coat them really good. And then what we're going to do is take, it can be any any kind of uh, onion soup mix. 
um, French's. This happens to be like the Aldi brand. And we like this stuff. I use it for this. We use it for onion dip. We use it for a lot of different things. So I usually have a couple boxes of this in the uh, in our pantry. The real cheap. Oven's going off. What I'm going to do is toss the uh, onion soup mix in with the potatoes. And I have my oven set up to 375. And they're going to go in there for about 30 minutes or so. You can put these on the grill as well. It'll work as a, something you can cook on the grill. If you want to get a little smoky flavor to them as well. If you got more than, uh, you know, one pan or potatoes, you can actually use two two envelopes of this stuff and then just do a whole big bunch if you're doing a party. They work real good. People think it's a gourmet dish, but it's really simple. And I'm just going to go ahead and get my hands dirty. I did wash them before I got, after I cut these up. So just get them mixed in real well. If it looks like you need a little bit more of that duck fat, you can go ahead and spray it on there because you kind of want these to crisp up a little bit when they're cooking in the oven. So you don't want it too dry and you want that onion to disperse. You don't want it to catch on the bottom. So you want to kind of mix it up really well and get it mixed all through the potatoes. And that's about it guys. It's a very simple dish. It goes with just about anything. Um, beef, chicken, pork. Um, very simple to do. All you got to do right now is toss it in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes or so. You can eyeball it. You can tell if you want them a little bit more crispy, they can go 35, 40 minutes. But I'm going to put them in there and we'll be back. Y'all, welcome back. Hey, I did get the ribs out of the sous vide. And I also reserved the uh, bag purge juices that were in the bag. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use this. I'm going to make a little sauce. And I'm going to kind of show you on, a side, uh, on the side after I get these on the grill how we're going to make a little sauce out of this. So since I'm going to put these on the smoker, I want to get some smoke to them. Unlike a steak, I'm not going to pat these dry because I want that moisture to grab a hold of the smoke. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some of the Run and Wild Gourmet Beef Rub. These were seasoned just uh, before I put them in the vacuum bag with just salt, pepper, garlic. But I'm going to add just a little bit of this Run and Wild Gourmet Beef Rub to finish these. Not a ton, just enough to cover it, coat it, because it is got still some of the seasoning on there. Some of it has come off in the purge, but that's why we're using that purge to make a nice sauce. Just enough to kind of give it a nice powder. I'm going to go ahead, throw them on the grill. Join me out back. All right, all my temps, just a little over 250, like right 260 or so, 270, 270. So I cut it back just a little bit, turn the, adjust this down just a little bit. So I don't want them to burn. I just want them to get some nice smoke to them. So I'm going to unlatch it. And I'm going to go ahead, put these on bone side down. And I have it, just, this set up as uh, indirect cooking here. So I have my deflate uh, my deflector plates in and got some nice smoke rolling got oak wood in there all right and we're gonna leave these in for about 20 minutes or so and then I'm gonna come back and check on them all right, guys we're back right about down to 250 again and it's been about 50 minutes they're starting to get a little brown there so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip them over we're not cooking over direct heat, so. All right. We'll let them get on that side for a little bit. And we'll leave them for another 10, 15 minutes. And they should be perfect. Be back. All right, all, it's been about 45, 50 minutes since these uh, went on. I flipped them once, flipped them twice. And they got a nice color on them. And I'm not really uh, concerned about the internal temperature of these because they are back ribs. So the meat is in between the bones. I really don't care. I'm going more for uh, tenderness than uh, the internal temp. 
since we sous vide them at 140 really doesn't matter so i'm going to take these off and then i'm going to see you inside all right guys everything's done got the ribs already got the potatoes got the sauce you can see how the sauce kind of came out now it's really nice like i said we don't need a ton of that sauce just enough to kind of coat the ribs and what i'm going to do this is just a couple of the four ribs i got so i'm actually just going to cut one piece of this off just so you can kind of see how they turned out a nice color to them i'm just going to take a bite out of the side here you see there's no smoke ring there's a little bit maybe but i'm not really looking for a smoke ring on these these are beef ribs a lot of times these are braised and boiled and overcooked anyway but since we sous vide them they're nice and tender and they didn't have to be overly overcooked so there's still a lot of juice in them still a lot of uh, nice and flavor beef flavor i'm gonna take a bite right here very tender not too at all then we got our potatoes you see how they come out nice and crispy nice color to them that duck fat is going to make them be really really nice so i'm gonna go ahead and taste one of these for you too they're really hot they just came out of the oven Woo! burned my fingers but so they're nice and soft got the onion flavor the duck flavor natural potato flavor very good try it guys try these uh, beef back ribs try it follow us on facebook follow us on instagram like subscribe and i'll see you on our next video thanks for watching guys